Hello, guys. Sorry again for the interruption here during the show, but that's okay. Because, you know, life is full of interruptions. Mark Lowry once said that life is, life is full of interruptions. And when we mess with life's interruptions, then it makes life boring. If life was always perfect and life was always just, you know, everything was a breeze, then we wouldn't need God. So life is full of interruptions. And that's why we need God. That's why, I, like I say, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior because we always need God because of life's interruptions and the reason why i think what happened is because the first time that we did it wasn't recording it actually recorded but it only recorded just uh, the announcements and then i talked about the app i clicked on the app on my chromebook the sound from the ad came on i believe and then it cut off the recording after that for some reason the sound stopped recording for some reason i don't know why it just had to do something with the interruption from the app or something. So with that being said, we are back here again, guys. And later on, since you guys were or if you are live, we will be piecing this back together. I can cut this and edit this in like 10 seconds. And then I can piece them both back together. And then I can have a good, good, clean audio of both sections. You won't have to have that interruption later on. So you all listen to the full episode. When it does come out, we'll be cutting the episodes together, piecing them. It's like it's like when you take an old tape from an old VCR, Chris, and the tape gets broken, you, you tape it together. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. We'll be taping this together, and we'll be fixing that for you. But in the meantime, let's play the song again so we can get into the worship of God for a minute, and we'll play none other than Give You Praise by the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. And again, that song is Give You Praise, Enjoy, Give You Praise.
are here, we are here to give you praise, give you praise, to give you praise. We are here, we are here, we are here to give you praise, to give you praise, to give you Hey guys, that was Give You Praise by none other than K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. And we are again live with Chris. Chris, hello again. Hi. And again, I'm glad you came to uh, tune in to this week's episode of TGIF. And we'll, we'll, like I was trying to say though, it's about the circumcision of the heart. That's the main thing. Like I said, you can get to your blue in the face into the water, dunk in, come out to your blue in the face, you can't breathe no more, but it doesn't mean nothing if you don't write it on the tablets of your heart so that when you depart, it will not depart from you. Our next scripture is Mark. I don't know why I'm in Luke. Why am I in Luke? I marked Luke for some reason. Let's see what Luke sixteen sixteen has to say just because I marked it for some reason. Where are we at? Where's 16 at? Just He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Huh. Okay. So again, you got to be baptized, the Bible says. Now, does that mean that everyone will be baptized in the... Let's go to Mark 2, Matthew, Mark. Let's see what Mark... Oh, that is Mark. Never mind. The next page said Luke on there, so I looked at the word Luke and said, Oh, we're in Luke. No, we're in Mark. So it's Mark sixteen sixteen again, guys. But now, does does that mean that everyone must be baptized in the uh, Holy Spirit and in the in tongues? Of course not. There are some people who will speak a tongue once and never speak it again. There are some people who may never speak in tongues. It just, it doesn't mean to see. You do not have to have the gift of tongues to be saved, but you do have to be baptized to be saved. Because being baptized itself is one of those where it's the outward appearance. It's the fact that you're stating publicly that I believe and love Jesus Christ and want to do His will. I want to be a disciple of His. That's what baptism is. And when you put that into the tablets of your heart. That's when it will never depart from you when you depart. And uh, as the Bible talks about also what says the, the, uh, the um, what's the word I'm looking for now? The circumcision of the heart. It says to circumcise the foreskin of your heart so that you no longer will be in sin. So and a lot of people out there think doing all these outward things, you know, circumcising you know, the man's area down there and circumcising all this stuff that don't mean diddly if that's all you're doing is for an outward appearance for god look at your outward appearance that did not mean diddly now the outward appearance as in displaying god publicly outward through your actions that's good for the people you're witnessing to but just just to I circumcised myself, God. I this and look what I did and I, I, I and me, me, me and that's wrong. That is just boasting about yourself and what you did. We need to boast about what God did, not just boast about him with words, but boast about him in our actions. People used to always say, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look saved. Well, in the aspect of looking saved as in showing the actions, absolutely. But you don't pretend to be saved. You walk saved. 
There's no pretending in this walk with Christ. It's all just you got to be saved. It's not one of those pretending to be saved. It's you have to be saved. Because like I said, if you pretend in front of everyone else, you just play and, you know, just talk to talk and then look at that hussy down the road two minutes later. It's not going to be diddly. And God cannot boast about you in front of the Father. Think about it. If you, if you said, you know, Jesus loves you, you need to be saved and sanctified, and you pray for somebody, and you bring them to Christ, right? But then two minutes later, you're walking down that street looking at the hussy. You mean, God's, Jesus going to be up there and say, yeah, my son saved so-and-so and brought him to me, but yeah, he looked at the hussy, I know. I'm sorry. He looked at her. He lusted over her in his heart. I know, God, it don't mean nothing now. I know it's not void. It technically is not, but at that moment, if you don't repent of it until you repent, that sinner that you that you got to Christ through the message is null and void until after you repent. Once you repent, that's when that's now no longer null and void, and then he can boast about you again in heaven to the Father. But it's all about the circumcision of the circumcision of the heart, the baptism of the heart. The baptism of the heart is the key thing. Because, see, when you're baptized, Chris, it's not just you're baptized and you're outwardly showing it. You are. But it's also a heart thing. Because, like I say, you can have all the knowledge in the world. One of the most smartest men in the Bible says, I have everything I want. Seventy concubines. I have seven virgins. Think about that, Chris. This guy had seven virgins that he can do with whatever he wanted to. He says, I have all the gold I could want. I have all the money I could want. He says, but I do not have the love of God. He don't have the love of Christ, and that's what was missing in his life. He thought that at first that all that fabulous stuff and the virgins and the concubines and the gold and the money that he had, he thought that was everything he needed. And then come to find out that was not everything he needed because he didn't have the love of Christ. So... With that being said, that was our message for today. And I'm glad you guys, hopefully you guys got something out of our message. And it's a good one because you need to be baptized to be saved. I always tell you how to get saved and what to do next. Then I had to tell you what to do next. But I can't tell you what to do next if I don't tell you that. You have to be baptized. It is a requirement in order to enter into heaven because... Baptism is a washing of sins. It washes your sins away. If you don't wash your sins away, Chris and I both know you won't get to heaven if you got sin in you, correct, Chris? Yes. Even if there's a little bit of an ounce of unforgiveness, even if before you die someone cuts you off and you say, I hate you, or you... Or 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 uh, you say say this say one of your enemies I hate you and then you die. You don't have a chance to repent. Are you still going to hell? Of course you are. Why? Because you just said you hated somebody and you died and didn't repent of your sin. That is a sin. Hate is actually a sin according to the Bible. It says anger and sin not. And hate is a very strong word that condemns people. And so what I'm saying is even with a little unforgiveness in your heart, even with just a drop, an ounce of it, as small as a grain of mustard seed, that much of unforgiveness will send you to hell for it. So that's why I'm saying that when you are when you're when you're walking